Just making a quick video today on how to measure amplifier power, the wrong ways and the right ways. Um, we've got some clamps hooked up as you can see, we've got one of our 12 inch prototype subs hooked up here. So we're going to do some of the clamping power measurements. I'm going to show why these type of measurements are usually really inaccurate and we're also going to show how they can be made more accurate. So current clamp here on the speaker wire voltmeter on the uh, voltage coming out of the amplifier to the speaker, same here, these are hooked up to the same exact thing it's just that this is a true RMS multimeter and this is not and there's going to be a difference and that's another problem that is introduced when you're trying to do a uh, measure like this so I'm going to go ahead and, and burp it um, and these are going to record the maximums, this one doesn't record the maximum so we're, I'm just going to manually look at that and see see the max that I saw it get to. Go ahead and set the range here so it's a little bit quicker to react. Okay, and here we go. So I saw 63.5 on here. So 63.5 volts and we got 8.96 amps. That's for that method if you were to use one of these and one of these. Now if you had a better meter and had a true RMS one like this, it shows 59.2 volts and this current here, 8.96 amps. Now, one thing that's a real problem here is we're probably clipping the signal pretty hard. So you have to, if you're going to do this clamping method, and you want any kind of useful information out of it, you need to use a scope and not, you know, measure your power right at the point of clipping. So let's do that. Right there. Okay, so right at the point of clipping, it's actually 47.2 volts and 5.48 amps. Now there's another problem. We have all these measurements, but even on this last one here where we're doing it uh, right to the point of clipping, we have a phase angle problem to deal with. If we multiply these numbers together that we just got, this times this, it doesn't equal watts. It equals VA. To, to get to watts, you have to multiply this, this, and the power factor. Well, what's the power factor? Well, that's when there's a difference in phase and current in the signal, then the power is not all that it appears to be. So if I just run this at a, a lower level here, and I've got two traces going on the scope here, one of them is the voltage and one is the current, you can see the, uh, the yellow is the current and the blue is the voltage. We can see there's a difference in phase between the two. So we can do some math. We know the difference in uh, between those two is 2.4 milliseconds. And we know our signal is 35 hertz, so I'll show all that math here in a minute. Take down these notes and uh, meet you over at the whiteboard. Okay, so on uh, the first situation, we had the non RMS meter and the clamp, and we got 60. 3.5 volts and 8.96 amps and the traditional way would just say oh we'll just multiply these well if you do that you get 569 569 what? it's not watts right? it's not watts okay this time with the uh, true RMS meter, we got 59.2 and same current to 530. Using the scope, measuring the actual usable clean signal with the true RMS meters. 47.2 volts, 5.48 amps.
158 VA. And now this one here would be this, except for we know there was some phase differences that we saw. So it's 47.2 volts times 5.48 amps times our power factor correction. Now, we saw that there is a 2.4 millisecond difference between those signals and we were playing 35 hertz. So the period of the signal is 28.57 milliseconds. This here, divide that by that. So we end up with about uh, 30 degrees of phase difference, cosine of 30 degrees. Eighty-six point four percent. So for this one here, we we put that in here also. Eight six four, and now we have. Now we have a real number, 223 watts. So you can think you're up here. This is really what's going on. That's the real number. Maybe we should see what the uh, impedance is. And you try to do it here and do the math to get your impedance to see you know, your box rise or whatever. It's going to be some number that's crazy because you're clipping. And so it's playing all kinds of harmonics also and everything. So if we did it on all these, it would come out different. We know this was a clean signal here. So I'm just going to say 47.2 divided by the current 5.48. And that works out to 8.6 ohms. So that's the real numbers, 223 watts at 8.6 ohms. We're going to run it on the amp dyno. Amp dyno doesn't have an 8.6 ohm load, but it has an 8 ohm load. So we can do that just for fun, just to see where we're at, but it should be around, you know, 250 watts because 8 ohms is a little bit more power. Let's run that real quick. All right, so we've disconnected all the meters and probes. We've hooked up the amp dyno, uh, set up for 8 ohms. It's as close as we can get to our numbers from before. So let's see what the amp dyno says at 8 ohms. There it is, 254. So we ran it on the amp dyno, we got 254 watts at 8 ohms. So these two right here are real, real power numbers. The rest of this just doesn't really mean a whole lot.